Capital is that part of wealth which is devoted to obtaining further wealth. In every age poets and social reformers have tried to stimulate the people of their own time to a nobler life by enchanting stories of the virtues of the heroes of old. The hope that poverty and ignorance may gradually be extinguished derives indeed much support from the steady progress of the working classes during the 19th century. But if inventions have increased man's power over nature very much, then the real value of money is better measured for some purposes in labor than in commodities. In the absence of any short-term and common use to represent all desirable things, or things that satisfy human wants, we may use the term goods for that purpose. In common use almost every word has many shades of meaning, and therefore needs to be interpreted by the context. The most valuable of all capital is that invested in human beings. Civilized countries generally adopt gold or silver or both as money. Greedy then as the economist must be for facts, he must not be content with mere facts, boundless as must be his gratitude to the great thinkers of the historic school. He must be suspicious of any direct light that the past is said to throw on the problems of the present. Facts by themselves are silent. Observation discovers nothing directly of the actions of causes, but only of sequences in time. The price of everything rises and falls from time to time and place to place, and with every such change the purchasing power of money changes so far as that thing goes. Producer's surplus is a convenient name for the genus of which the rent of land is the leading species. We might as reasonably dispute whether it is the upper or the under blade of a pair of scissors that cuts a piece of paper as whether value is governed by utility or cost of production. And very often the influence exerted on a person's character by the amount of his income is hardly less, if it is less, than that exerted by the way in which it is earned. Nature's action is complex and nothing is gained in the long run by pretending that it is simple and trying to describe it in a series of elementary propositions. The commercial storm leaves its path strewn with ruin, when it is over there is calm, but a dull, heavy calm. The most reckless and treacherous of all theorists is he who professes to let facts and figures speak for themselves. Though a simple book can be written on selected topics, the central doctrines of economics are not simple and cannot be made so. Material goods consist of useful material things and of all rights to hold or use or derive benefits from material things or to receive them at a future time. Political economy or economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. Statistics are the straw out of which I, like every other economist, have to make the bricks. Slavery was regarded by Aristotle as an ordinance of nature, and so probably was it by the slaves themselves in olden time. Again, most of the chief distinctions marked by economic terms are differences not of kind but of degree. Individual and national rights to wealth rest on the basis of civil and international law, or at least of custom that has the force of law.